Hi friends, time for another installment on meditations on Psalm 130. This will be part three, and I'm going to call it Our Vigil, Waiting for the Morning. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Psalm 130, verse 5 and 6. The psalmist cries out of the depths to the one who is above and who hears. No matter how deep the abyss, God sees and cares. He wants to hear you cry out to him for mercy and deliverance. We can cry out in confidence, even though we know that we're sinners, for the simple reason that God forgives sin. He doesn't mark iniquity. He's willing and able to clear our slate and to give any sinner, no matter how vile, a new beginning. Remember that one of the concluding verses of the Bible has the Creator proclaiming, Behold, I make all things new. God forgives freely those who confess their sins to Him and who simply ask Him for forgiveness. Now the psalmist, with all of the saints throughout time and up to the present, now he's in the position of waiting for the Lord. Forgiveness is awesome and is an absolutely astonishing gift, but it's also the open door to an even greater universal purpose of God for all of his creation. We go from, if any man is in Christ, is a new creation, unto, behold, I make all things new, which implies our participation in that new creation. God is working out his purposes in time, so we wait. Now, our waiting is not mere idle time passing. We have things to do. We have work to do for our Lord. We're waiting on the Lord as servants. That's what waiting means. A waiter in a restaurant is not sitting around. A waiter is constantly attending to his waiting. We wait. We wait for the Lord. It, and so we are waiting upon the Lord as servants and taking our place in the purposes of God. This involves seeking the Lord for direction, participation in the life of the local church, and living in a world which we no longer have an affinity to, having been born again into a new creation. And by the world, by the way, the world no longer has any affinity to us. We are in between two worlds, passing each other, going in a different direction. The apostles and prophets knew of two epochs. They called the present age and the age to come, which is also called by Jesus the regeneration. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we've forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Truly I say to you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, you also shall sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew 19, 27 to 28. You see, this age is ending. The sun is going down on it, for it, it is an age of sin and of failure and of death and decay and things break down. The only positive thing about this age is that men can find redemption, forgiveness, and can be recreated in order to participate in the new creation. Thus, our problem is that we are children of the age to come, and yet here we are at this age waiting. We're waiting for the dawn of a new age, the day of the Lord, and the messianic kingdom to come, to fully come to this earth. In a way, we're the vanguard of it. We're the children of tomorrow, but it's today. We're a lot like Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead. When Jesus called his name at the graveyard, Lazarus came forth and stood in the opening of the tomb. And that's an amazing sight. He stood in the opening of the tomb, and for those few brief moments, he stood between two worlds. Behind Lazarus was death, decay, grave clothes, the realm of sorrows and shadows, and of bitter regrets. But before Lazarus was the land of the living, fresh, clean air, his living loved ones, flowers, trees, hopes, anticipations, etc. But he, Lazarus, stood between those two worlds, waiting for the removal of his grave clothes. 
In this psalm, the God-fearer in this world is likened unto a watchman waiting for the dawn of the morning. I used to work third shift. I know what that's like. He longs for the day to break, for the light to rise, and for the end of the night. But it is still night, so he must wait. Paul wrote on this in the eighth chapter of Romans, and he says that the believer is joined in his waiting by all of creation itself. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. We know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. Romans 8, 18 to 23. We see in this passage Paul's breakdown of the two ages mentioned earlier. Paul talks about the sufferings of this present time and then contrasts that with the day of glory soon to be revealed. All of creation itself, literally everything, animals, plants, land, sea, all creation was subject to vanity, i.e. futility, when mankind fell. Things break down, they rot, they rust, they die. There is rust and decay and breakdown constantly. Nothing is as it was originally created. God did this when we fell so that man in his fallen state could never feel like he can have a complete life in this age. We are to want the age to come. We are to want to be a part of it. We groan, as does creation, and Paul likens it to the birth of a child. First comes labor, pain, water, breakage, blood, transition, then birth. We wait for the baby and go through all of the above in the hope of the beautiful day to come. But that baby that we all wait for is the age of Messiah, the full coming of the kingdom, the millennium. Oh, may that day come quickly. Shalom, everybody.